Yeah, I'll take that. Have you had walking papers no final check. <laughs> now you can go copy. That's cool. <laughs> what was that voided check for? 3.32 points. I think it was a double payment. Yeah, that was a double payment. Okay. Dollars in bills have been paid. Everything's caught up. Everything's paid off, to my understanding, except for like Tyler Tech and the auditors. Till today. Oh, yeah, till yeah, today. Till today. Yeah. But everything's caught up to date, basically. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> That's a good thing. I'm actually excited about it. I am too. Great job. Yeah, it's really good. It's awesome. I like it. Very few times you can come in and report that kind of papers. <laughs> it may not ever happen again, but hey, today we can do that. Uh, well, on the Tyler Tech, out of that remaining original balance, uh, there's twenty nine thousand eight hundred twenty eight dollars left on the original. On the back pay of it. On the back pay of it, and then we got a bill for the new maintenance agreement that'll be in effect from November 19, 2019 until November of 2020, October of 2020. And that's for 13,621.44, which is due October the 31st. Are you all pleased with that service or the direction you want to keep going? Christina likes it. She's the one that works on it. I hear some hesitation in your voice. I, I think on this, if Jerry can probably agree on the support side, Tyler Tech is not good at all. Exactly. In all these other companies, you can call somebody and they're right there. Tyler Tech is not that way. Exactly. You may be on hold for three hours. You may get a phone call back. You may not get a phone call back. And they charge you for every every yeah phone call. Every day. So after we get them paid off and up to up to date and up to snuff and out of contract, you go to possibly. Well, Haley and I kind of discussed this briefly the other day. It's kind of like right now we're stuck because we still have the outstanding indebtedness. Yeah. And then if we don't pay for basically the maintenance coming up, the maintenance contract coming up, we will have no support whatsoever because they will cut it off. When's our contract been done with them? Well, 20, well this, okay, the payment schedule they have made up for us, the $3,300 for each month mm -hmm. ends in June. Okay. But between now and June, we would have to pay each month on time, which we have been doing. Mm -hmm. And then, um, which will probably mm -hmm. still give us support. <clears throat> But we'll also have to have the other twenty nine thousand paid off. Uh -huh. Are you gonna have enough money to dig deep and pay that off, you think? And maybe is there is there another what I'm getting at, is there another cheaper company out there? Something um, or, I have or a, better, at least get better for our money or? I have a quote a previous quote I got back from CIC, the company they had before, and there's another company that's doing the talking with right? No. I know what it is because Christina really likes Tyler Tech, so I mean, and she is that's what she works with every single day. <coughs> so I don't, so I don't keep. it's gonna be a hard, it's yeah, it's gonna be a yeah, so I don't know. I feel like, and JJ does too, so I kind of feel like, even though it's our decision, I feel like they should kind of have some say so in it because they work in it. 
Yeah, I feel like kind of like we're stuck. Yeah. And I know Christina did not like CSE. But anyway. So. I wasn't here, so I don't know. Yeah, me neither. So we have that. So. Department of Employment Services will be back on November the 19th to continue on the audit. There's a question about some how that we are amending or how we are uploading to the system for our quarterly wage report. So there's some issues going on there. So he'll be back in November. I've got the correction for this, the bus will be getting in a deal that's gotcha. fixed. And so I'm hoping to pay a few more of the bills that we have outstanding still like this on Tyler Tech and finish paying off the auditor's report, auditor's balance that we have still with this and try to save back some money for the renovation payment and see what else is going on. If something doesn't do anything right, then we have a whole bunch of bills over there. Look, we're not too, too bad. I just need to sign that one and get them back to me. And other than that, I don't have anything. Okay. Any I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't heard, but we probably need to, right? When you think? And while, while Jody's in here, would you like to go into closed session and discuss? With, uh, I was going to wait till the sheriff came here a little bit. Okay. It's all right. Okay. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, I asked him to come, I think, at what, 9.25, Jeff, or 9.30, I think it was, whatever. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay. Yeah, we'll just wait until the Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, John. So it's about 25-26% over, the low bid was 25-26% over what the engineering estimate was. Um, I've had some discussions with the consultants on the project and also <coughs> with my uh, local roads field engineer about the project and you know they're, they both are the local roads field engineer anyway, he, he thinks that uh, even though it's over the estimate that we probably ought to go ahead and just award it because he doesn't think that the prices are ever going to get any better. Uh, you know, the other option you have is to not award it and rebid the project, but unless we significantly change something in the project or get more bidders or something of that nature, it's not going to get any better. Um, it's weird, there's a $42,000 difference in the Yeah. Table. And the reason
even being on that, there are two different precasters that uh, were giving these contractors pricing, and the one that did the higher amount did not get the price from the second precaster. He only got a price from one of the precasters. So that's at least the good explanation he gave me. I mean, uh, as you can see, the, the main the cost of the project is well the precast docks and the precast wing walls. I mean, everything else is pretty. That was basically all the difference there was, was the, that $22,000, right? Yeah, and there, I mean, other items, if you look at them individually, some are more, some are less, and it all washes out, though, in the end. That was pretty much the main difference with that wing wall. Um, so, I mean, I, I've been talking with Lance, who's my field engineer with IDOT. He, he said we have enough money in the township bridge program uh, to cover this, so it shouldn't be a problem there. We, we have to obviously pay 20%. That's how township bridge program works, is the township bridge program funds cover 80% of the project, and our local funds cover 20% of the project. Um, our 20% of this amount is, is amounts to about $32,000. Little, that's a little bit generous. It's probably just a little less than thirty-two thousand, about thirty-one or something. Um, so, if you know, we're all in agreement to go ahead and award the project to the low bidder, I'm going to ask to pass a resolution to pay you the thirty-two thousand dollars out of our highway bridge uh, account. Uh, but I don't know if you had any questions or wanted any, to discuss this any further or, or anything about that. Um, Kind of is what it is. I checked on with the engineer about okay, what do they, what would they, if we didn't do a box culvert here, if we did a bridge instead, like we've been doing, give me a, an estimate of what you think it would be. And they, they came back to me and said, well, with a bridge, it would be somewhere around 200000 So this actually is, it is less expensive than a bridge is by 40 something thousand dollars. Um, Is the, the main part of cost on both bridges and this is the precast sections. When you get precast, pre-stressed bridge beams, it's the same precaster that's precasting with box cover. And they, they've really upped their prices in the last three or four years with little to no explanation. And I, I, I don't really understand why other than they know they can get away with it because there are not very many of them competing out there. And they're just doing it to make money. The only explanation I have. Uh, there, we can, and, and I've been talking to low bidder already about maybe where we can cut some of these things out of the project. You know, we could award the project as is and then cut some of these line items out. Like, for instance, we we've, we've got in the project to go ahead and coat recoat what was disturbed with oil and chip. Uh, if they won't, if they do this project in the winter, they won't be able to do it in the spring anyway. So we can cut that out of the project and maybe do that with our own money, and it would be a whole lot cheaper. It's about so much space. It's about six thousand dollars we can cut out of that project, wow, that yeah, project that's for that. Uh, and there's also a, a bit on here of, of waterproofing the structure. Uh, a lot of times. You know, when, we, when IDOT does box culverts and things like that, they do waterproofing just because IDOT salts the living crap out of their roads. And when you waterproof it, it protects the structure from deterioration. We don't use that much salt. Everyone thinks that we could probably get charge of that. That would be a, a $4,500 savings. I'm not sure if it'd be worth it. It may be worth just going in and doing the waterproofing. I would talk to the engineers more about that to see what they recommend. Um, you already got down to 147,000 to do that. So. Yeah. So. Cutting our 20% down. And really, there, there's nothing really. I mean, it's pretty much a bare bones project. There's really nothing more to cut out of it. I mean, that, um, except the oil and chipping. And, and, but we're going to have. We're going to be paying for the oil and chipping one way or the other. And whether we pay them to do it or do it ourselves, it's just going to be a whole lot cheaper if we do it ourselves. Instead of costing $6,000, it may cost us $2,000. 
I said, be the money we're saving. <coughs> but the the way we can do this is award the project as is and just not not have the duties pay items and so we wouldn't pay for the pay items. That's perfectly fine. That's fine. That's fine. Not. So that's yeah, that's the resolution I want to pass to pay for the twenty percent of the project of Highway Bridge fund. Saving nearly two thousand bucks, but not on that twenty percent. If you cut every bit of it out, you got to do the math. There is it worth the two thousand dollars difference on our side? The oh, one chip, and I definitely think he is. I don't know about the waterproof. I mean, the waterproof is just a nice little addition to the project to protect the structure, give it more durability and more life. So I don't know. I'm all for saving money and cutting things out, but when it's something like that, I mean, it's going to actually help you as far as getting some life on the structure. I don't save that amount of money. I don't think it's really that much worth it. Well, that's, that's the difference in the 20% between cutting out the chipping and the waterproofing. Right. And you said it cost us $2,000 to do the chipping, possibly. Uh, the waterproofing alone. Is forty five hundred dollars, so the twenty percent of that is only nine hundred dollars. We're just saving on the waterproofing. Yeah. And if you do the do the six thousand dollars, you're only not that much either. So uh, it's going to cost us two thousand dollars. <coughs> yeah, we'll put it up two thousand up there. So as far as today, um, if you. I'm going to have to assemble a contract and, and we will have to sign it and execute it. I have to send it to the contractor to sign first. So uh, as long as we agree to award it, I guess maybe we need to vote on awarding it to Sam Ron, then we'll, then we'll sign it in a different meeting whenever I get it back, get the paperwork back from them. Uh, we, we can do that in a different meeting. I also need to vote on the resolution to pay for 20% of the project. So it should be done. Motion two votes. Mo motion to award the project. Motion made to uh, approve the Samron Midwest contracting for 157321 Yes. I'll make that motion. I'll get a second. I'll second it. Okay. And then also. You're welcome. Oh, welcome. Yeah. Uh, Jason Farmer. Yes. Gerald Children. Yes. Jeff Berger. Yes. Uh, and then also, uh, we need a motion made for this resolution as written. Uh, the, uh, has been presented here for the amount of what thirty-two thousand being taken out of the county highway bridge fund. Is that correct, Joe? Yes. Okay. 
I'd like to know. Roll call. Jason Connor. Yes. Gerald Thomas. Yes. Jeffrey. Yes. The other thing I want to know is a light discussion on is oversizing the weight loads that's been coming through the county. And then I had some discussions with Jeff last week about it because the state police had stopped someone and given them a ticket for having a 240,000-pound load driving through some of our roads and on the state highways and whatnot. But I guess. I guess he ended up giving them a ticket because he didn't have a local permit to travel on our roads. Um, it happens so often, it, it's unbelievable. I do get some requests from trucking companies to issue them permits for oversized overweight loads, but by and large, percentage-wise, probably IDOT, I mean, for instance, IDOT is issued, I, I looked up through my email, they sent me a notice of when they issue a permit. Since June, they've issued like 230 permits to go through our local road system. And I think I've issued maybe, uh, I think 12 or 13 permits this year on on people actually calling me and asking <coughs> for them. So percentage-wise, people don't call and ask for permits and ask and I've turned down several permits over the summer of huge loads wanting to come through some of our roads that are just stupid to come through. And the reason why is because IDOT has closed the routes that are under construction to this kind of traffic. So, for instance, while 145 is being over paved and overlaid, they're not allowing any oversized loads to go through there. So they try to shift them off on the local roads to get around their construction. Same with I-24, the bridge over Country Club Road. They will not let any oversized overweight loads go through that construction zone while construction is going on. So they ride them off I-24 onto the local system and try to get them back on 24. So we've had tons of these loads. and There's, there's been loads like this one that they gave a ticket to the other day, quarter million pound loads trying to go across like Jefferson School Road and Old Mary Road and, and, and Ignorant Road. He was, he was given an overweight on elevated local structure, first and third fifths, so he was given. Yeah. So, I'm you really... Did check that road? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I didn't really notice anything. Um, and I checked the bridge, too, and there wasn't any damage, visual apparent damage done to the bridge. Um, it's just that these, these loads are just... It, it's, getting to the point where it's ridiculous and I don't know how to handle, I mean, I do, I use my, my judgment and, and the, you know, the bridges that they cross, if they're actually crossing the bridge, I send their load configuration up to the IDOT bridge office for them to run it through their program to tell me whether it's okay or not. 99 times out of 100, they'll come back and say, yeah, it's okay. I don't even know if they check it up there. I mean, they just don't want it on their system, so they put it on ours and they say it's okay. That's all I've got to go by, and I do have it in writing, so if anything happens, we can go back on it. But at the same time, it's our system, and they're not going to be paying for it when it does cave in or, or cause a problem. So that was 120 tons going across probably a, what, a 30 ton limit. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean now these. They had six axles or whatever. These bridges are designed for the. You know, HL 93 or the HS 20 loading, which is legal loads, but I, I mean, and they do have a safety factor on them, but I don't know how much. I mean, the way that their axles are configured, and I, it's people have done master's degree theses on the damage that oversized and overweight loads cause to roads, and I mean, it's just such an unclear thing, and it's, it, how to calculate it and how to determine it. And, I mean, a load is a load, and you can calculate how much weight is on a bridge at one point in time, whether it's going to damage a bridge, but you can't really quantify that for a highway or a road. I mean, I, I can guarantee you that these kind of loads are doing damage to the entire system, whether it be ours or the states or the cities or whoever's, and it's never really quantified because people just don't know. Um, I guess the dilemma that I'm I'm facing is we're 
we're getting more and more of these coming through. And, and a lot of these ridiculous loads like this, this is the same guy that got ticketed here, their origination is coming from Lafarge this time. Okay, They're taking some huge transformers out of Lafarge that weigh this much. So they've got like 11 axles on a truck. and So they want to go down, you know, say Portland Road, Grand Chain Road, Bowes Road, and then out to the state system, and then maybe come back to our system somewhere else. That's, that's in this case, that's what happened. Um, most of the time, if somebody requests for me to give them a permit and they're not crossing a bridge, I will go ahead and issue them a permit for it. Right, wrong, or indifferent. I mean, it, according to the law, the Illinois statute of permitting oversized overweight loads, how I read it is that whoever has jurisdiction over the road, it's up to their discretion whether to give it or not give it. Okay. Uh, I would be more apt to not want to give somebody a load if they're, say, traveling from Florida to Canada and they just want to come through our, our town. But if they're originating at Lafarge, I mean, how, what do you do? I mean, then you can't pick and choose, and that's kind of discriminating against people. So I, I, don't, I don't know how to, other than just continue on the way I'm going. I mean, I'm trying to use the best engineering sense that I can so that it doesn't damage our bridges and do anything like that. But I'm getting tired of having to look at it and issue it and worry about it. The other thing is is cost, okay? When the state of Illinois issues them a permit, they charge them a fee to issue them a permit. Uh, we don't, we haven't ever charged anyone a fee to issue a permit. If we started charging, you know, we could set a, set a dollar amount based on whatever criteria, and I would have to do some research as to how to do that, but the only way I know of that we can even get that done is if we hired some kind of service or got our own credit card machine or something to where somebody can pay right up. You know, we can't wait snail mail to get received checks from people to do this kind of thing. It's just not not feasible. So, and then actually having somebody to have to call all these people that don't call for permits is takes another another facet. Is, is, is it takes a lot of manpower to do this. I mean, I, I'm, that's why I looked up how many permits they've issued since June, and it's 200 or something. So, you know, you're talking about an average of five to ten permits a week. What does the state of Illinois charge? I, I don't know. I think they charge, it's, it's a sliding scale based on the, the amount of miles they drive across the state road or something like that, and I would have to do some research to figure out. But um, I'm sure it's a couple hundred dollars per permit is what the state charges whenever they issue them to, to somewhere near $1,000 if it's going on a lot, a lot of state roads. Uh, see, they have a whole department and, and, you know, 20 dedicated people in a system and it's all automated that does this stuff. We don't have anybody. <laughs> and I, although I would like to be able to do that, I don't know that I would, I mean, what, what happens when I'm gone today or if I'm on, on a construction project and nobody else is in my office to even review these things. Uh, so, I don't know, I guess I'm more talking to make you all aware of the problems that we're facing, and I really don't know how to resolve them, I mean, in, it, in its completeness. Uh, the way that we've been doing it is the, the only way that, you know, I've known to review the ones that ask for it and, and, and get it done in a timely manner uh, you know, and do all the rest of the work that I have to do at the same time. <coughs> you know. What's the uh, other counties around this area, what are they doing? Well, I've checked with a few of them, like w Williamson <coughs> County. <coughs> the bid. The bid, 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 bid. Um, at Williamson County, they use a system called court money to actually, they pay this this third party for permits, and then 
<coughs> they, they take their cut out of it. And so would that work for you since you're not in office on? Would that be a, It would work program? as far as paying for the permit, but they do not review any of the the routes or they don't, they're ignorant, totally ignorant to the fact of how many bridges they're going over. If, if right. it needs so what's this engineer do in that situation? How does this Well, he's it? got two assistants that oh. work with him. But they got some people over there, yeah, in yeah. other words, to, to stay on top of it if he's gone. And, and you say assistants, down. are they like clerical people or actual engineers that like that? Uh, engineer. Engineer, okay. um, now, some of the other counties like that are in our boat, like that just have a county engineer and nobody else, they don't even issue permits. Yeah. I mean, like Pulaski County, they like, they like to look at this stuff. So usually when you find out about this, you, you need it immediately. I, I mean, the person like, hey, we're coming through right now. Well, and that's the thing. We don't know when they're coming through. They give a window of like a week, the state does, so you don't have any idea if they're coming through at 8 o'clock this morning or 3.30 Friday afternoon. I mean, and you can't sit out there and wait for them. I mean, it's just, it would be totally impractical. Uh, so the job of the sheriff. So, uh, uh, I guess if anyone has any ideas of how we can address this, or I was, I was even thinking about, you know, setting a, a limit to what we actually will permit when they ask for it, uh, like, you know, some of these really heavy loads like you're talking about, unless they originate from our county or are being delivered to our county, I would say no, on any part of those. No, just no. You can't drive on a state road. You can't be on our. But I don't know what that magic number would be. Uh, you know, be weight wise. Weight wise, yeah. Uh, yeah what's that car road? Is that the tour road? I mean, it, especially in the middle, especially in the middle of summer, whenever it's, it's the road's 100 plus degrees and it's soft anyway. I mean, it's one of these loads that that I've denied some loads going across. Jefferson School, Old Marion Road, and Marion Road. I've denied like three or four of them, and I told the state to block those roads because they they can't make it in that on that route. But here, I think I don't know if I still have a picture. I'm sure that's what I'm looking for while I'm talking. Uh, there was a load that went through there that tore a huge gouge out of the pavement. Yeah, that's it right there. It was clearly an oversized load. They couldn't make the turn. They drug their low boy. Yeah, they usually only about six inches of four grain. They went for a huge gouge that was about eight inches deep and about 20 feet long out of our oil and ship road. Okay? This is, you know, nobody saw the truck. You don't know who it was and what happened. And we didn't permit anybody to go through there. So what do we do? We have to go out and fix it. I mean, this is just one instance where we know they damaged the road. How many instances are there where they just damage it and rut it up and everything else that, that we don't know about? So, I don't know. I'm done preaching, I guess. I just wanted to make you aware of some of the dilemmas we're facing. If the MBA's had any ideas as to what they want to see done or how we can do something different, I'm all ears. Uh, but with personnel that we have and the system that we have and I, I just don't know how to do anything different than what I'm doing right now. And there are, you know, some local people ask for permits, you know, like Young, you know, the, I mean, they have a, they ask for permits, a blanket permit, a yearly permit to carry their equipment across the county doing all the work they because all of their loans are oversized by the way. So we issue them that a year. Um, you know, some of the other local people, when you, when you take an excavator anywhere, anybody that transports an excavator requires an oversized by the way load. So, so we do that for people. They actually are from here and travel our roads regularly, as well as people from out of town. Anyway, 
You guys have anything for me? I'd be fine. I'll go and see that guy. <laughs> he got his number. Sheriff, you want to come on up? Yeah. <coughs> no complaint on the bill. Good. Pretty awesome. Can't have much complaint with one sheet. That's right. Very good. He's volunteering to put on biohazard suits and climb down there for half that, but you still run, you know, for risk. Um, like the only ones we've been able to find so far, I'd be willing to do something like that. It seems pretty high to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's me. Um, that's the only one I can get right now. Yeah. That seems a little steep. Nasty job, but we yeah. haven't given a go ahead. That's just a. Ask them what they ask for, and I'm going to bring it to you to see All right. what action you want to take next. If you want to table it for a little bit and think about it, or see if there's somebody else you can come up with. Maybe we can turn around. You mentioned mm -hmm. biohazard and bird waste and dead birds, and it kind of turns people off. Sure. Yeah, I understand. Did you get your new vehicle? Yes, we picked it up yesterday. Took it to the Jackson Purchase to uh, get the equipment out of that Tahoe. And as soon as I do that, we'll take the Tahoe back to Linwood with the title. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, did, uh, we did pick it up. They did honor the deal. And uh, I was able to pay for it with uh, funds through our SO account, drug fund, vehicle fund. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, not a line item purchase. Right. They did take a hit on it, I'd say, but they did honor that deal. Yeah, they stepped up. What did Eddie Beck do for you guys? Eddie Beck come in, we had a uh, clogged sewer line. Okay. Uh, right beside my office, as a matter of fact. Um, we put the trustees on it all day to try to get it. Yeah. And after. Uh, a long, hard, messy, smelly day. Yeah. We called Eddie back and he had it fixed fairly quickly. He did. Tried to get it done free labor, but uh, yeah. it didn't pan out so well. Yeah. Well, you tried. But Eddie, Eddie got it fixed right back up. Right. That uh, sewer system that happens every once in a while, usually from the, uh, from the jail. Yeah. But that's happening fast. Yeah. Anything else? Actually, I'd like to ask for the session for personnel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Close session. <coughs> I'll make that motion. Awesome. 